Hello everybody and welcome to this terrifying tag video. This is the the spooky Halloween tag and it was originally done by Books of Blood and I was tagged by fucking Alan at Big Heart Classics Bucks. Um, and he's been on my fucking ass, dude, because I haven't been doing tags lately. I'm sorry, guys. I'm backed up. Wow. I talked about my ass and being back up in the same sentence. That's tragic. There's been a lot of really cool answers. I, I never even saw this tag. And so I went and watched, like, a few people who've done it, and it's classic, classic, classic. Okay. So what is your favorite horror or Halloween-themed song? Wow. I would say Halloween by the Misfits. I don't know how you could not do that one. Um, and in fact, if you go to IHateMattWall.com, you can hear a cover version that I did of that. And I posted it yesterday on Halloween. But I'm also kind of a sucker for Bobby Boris Pickett and the Monster Mash. So that's good. But I would have to also throw in um, my song, 1031, which you could find on any streaming platform, including YouTube Music, Spotify, all sorts of other shit. Okay? If I had the images to put in there, I would have done it like this, and it would have looked like a really fucking cool, like, edit job. But I'm probably not going to do that. Um, name something you wouldn't want to run into in a dark forest or an abandoned building. Honestly, I wouldn't want to run into a fucking tree in a dark forest because that would fucking hurt like a bitch yeah and then in, a, in an abandoned building i wouldn't want to run into no floor like because if it's an abandoned building you never know and if you're running and then like all of a sudden the floor has fallen through that's that shit that's how you end up like i don't know on like one of those hay bale things with like blades coming up or like also, I've seen too many movies, man. Um, have you ever played with a Ouija board? Yes, I have. And um, I got into some trouble with a Ouija board when I was a kid. Story for a different day. But also, I just found out that um, James Merrill, I think is his name, he used a Ouija board to, I don't know, to interview or just talk to dead poets. So I just heard about this. So I have to like look this up and see what kind of shit he came up with because that's fucking hysterical. And when I heard about that, the dude who told me, I'm like, did they fucking respond in meter? Um, and I didn't get a response to that. So um, favorite horror monster or villain? It would have to be, have to be the Boris Karloff Frankenstein monster from the first three Frankenstein movies, but mainly from Bride of Frankenstein. My heart. Um, let's see. Number five, the creepiest thing that's ever happened while you were alone. Jesus fucking Christ. A lot of things. V very, very many things. Um, I don't even know how to just pick one. I think probably the creepiest thing to ever happen to you when you're alone is when you realize that you're actually not alone. That's probably, yeah, we could just leave it there. That, that, that encompasses a lot of shit right there. If you were dared to spend the night in a haunted house, would you do it? I've done it my whole life, so. Um, are you superstitious? I'm not superstitious based on like things you see. But I guess I would be considered superstitious based on things you say. Because I believe words carry a lot of meaning. And you need to be careful with the words that you say and the order that you say them in. And the intention you put behind those words. Let's see. Do you ever see figures in your peripheral vision? Peripheral vision. All the fucking time. And then sometimes not in my peripheral vision. Sometimes in my... My front for all vision. But it's funny. I watched um, Pax Panic's answers to these. And she's like, yeah, that's just called getting old. So if you want to call them figures, that's fine. But that, that cracked me up. Do you prefer gore or thrillers? Thrillers 
every day, hands down. Do you believe in multiple dimensions or worlds? I do, but I don't think they're what we think they are. This goes back to the whole HP Lovecraft, the first line out of fucking Call of Cthulhu. What is it? Shit, I'm gonna misquote it now. But basically, like, we cannot comprehend a lot of things. And if we could comprehend some of the things that are going on out there, it would drive us all mad. So um, I think that is a fucking super true fucking statement. But I don't know if I would say like, oh yes, there are other worlds and other dimensions. Like that's, that's like, I feel like that's like romper room talk, you know? Like that's very, that is a very elementary way of looking at stuff. Ever made a potion of any sort? Yeah, when I was like in fourth or fifth grade, this is so fucking stupid, but me and my friends, when we would like have like sleepovers and shit, we would make boner formulas. And what this basically was, was we would dare each other to drink a concoction. Usually we would put it in a blender and it would be like milk, orange juice, apple juice, ice cream, gummy bears, steak, celery, carrots, candy bars, like anything we can get at one time. We would put it in a blender and then drink it until we felt like we were going to die. And then we would stand there and go, is it happening? Is it, oh, I feel it. I feel it. It's happening. Because we were under this assumption that eventually we would stumble upon something that would like make our fourth grade manhood something superior and amazing never worked but um yeah that was a horrible fucking story and i'm very embarrassed that i told it do you get scared easily totally do i stay scared probably not but um the initial scare of something all the fucking time like, I'm the jumpiest motherfucker in the world. It could be all the fucking coffee, but um, I'm jumpy as shit. And that's why, probably why I'm always like... Like, I, I always have to, like, know my surroundings at all times. Have you ever played Bloody Mary? Live? Yeah. No, but seriously. Um, I played Bloody Mary tons of times since elementary school. Um, I worked on um, Charlie Vaughn's film Bloody Mary 3D. I um, wrote and recorded the theme song for the movie called I Believe in Bloody Mary, which is also on Creeperson Reanimated, which again is available on all streaming platforms, including YouTube Music and Spotify. So you can check that out. And we used to play that live all the time. Like the, the last two tours we went on, that was our um, like one of our staple songs that we played. Do you believe in demons and the devil? Like, I'm not trying to like cause shit right now, but I think um, organized religion, as far as the American Christian church, is way more terrifying than any fucking demon or devil that you could fucking put in front of me. Um, I also don't believe in the devil or demons the way horror wants us to believe in them because those are based off of the Christian mythology. Like, it is not the same thing. I believe there are things. I believe there are definitely things out there that are what they are, but when I consider them demons or the devil like it's ludicrous it would be like me saying like oh well because of my religious beliefs every time like i think a monster is coming it was sent by the easter bunny you know it's it's fucking stupid it's that's why like religious horror like the exorcist and the omen and all this other shit never freaked me out because when i was a church going person I was like, why don't they just, like, have faith that everything will be fine? This is fucking stupid. These are fucking priests. Are Catholics not really religious people? I don't, I don't get it. Like, if you believe in God, like, according to the fucking Bible, none of this should bother anybody. Like, this should all be... So it's like, oh, I'm watching a movie and reading a book of a bunch of 
bad Christians who think they're Christians. It, like, the whole thing's fucking ludicrous. And then when I stopped believing in God altogether, like, all of that shit didn't bother me at all. Because it's like, this is all pretend and make-believe. Like, I know people who, I don't know, Irish Catholics, people who have, like, a lot of guilt and, like, their whole, like life and afterlife and everything going on revolves around the addition or subtraction of guilt. It's a fucking horrible fucking way to live, dude. That's scarier than fucking demons and the fucking devil. Ugh. You're home alone, but you hear footsteps in your house. What do you do? Same thing I do fucking every day. I fucking hope to God they fucking go away and I just sit there and cross my fingers. If you got trapped in one scary movie, which would you choose? Hmm. Well, here's the thing. I, my opinion of horror films have been getting worse and worse over the years. Like, for instance, if I picked Sinister, I would pick Sinister, and then I would go in and turn the fucking lights on in the house. Sorted. It's not a scary movie anymore. But when you walk around in the fucking dark the whole fucking time, it's going to get fucking scary. I don't know. Let me see. Frankenhooker? That would be fun. The Vampire Lovers? That would be fun. Rocky Horror. Hands down. Sorted. Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's close enough to a horror movie for me. So that's what I want to be in. If you could only wear one Halloween costume the rest of your life, what would you be? If we're talking just costume, I don't know if you guys know the IT crowd, but um, what what's his name? Renum, the boss, Matt Berry's character, the suit that he made for his trial on the last episode. I would wear that every day for the rest of my life. Um, that's hot as shit. But if it was like a scary costume, ah, it's a scary costume, but it's not uh, from a horror movie. But if I could wear one costume the rest of my life, it would be, um, what's his fucking name? I don't know what his name was in Mad Max, but, um, a bunch of wrestlers did the gimmick afterwards is, uh, hu humongous. It's basically a hockey mask and like a fucking, like S and M club, a fucking, harness and like some like speedos or something be down dude with some fucking gauntlets with spikes on it yeah that I, I would wear that for the rest of my life for real would you ever go to a graveyard at night yes and have and have done photo shoots in graveyards at night have filmed movies in graveyards at night have partied in graveyards at night my family um used to work high up in a mortuary chain so um there was definitely a lot of those around and i grew up in a town that had not only the best school west of the mississippi for fucking mortuary science but had one of the biggest cemetery funeral home things like right down the street so yeah in a zombie apocalypse what is your weapon of choice time I would just try to find a place, especially if it was Southern California in the summer. Let, let, let's fucking rock this like this. Let's say the zombie apocalypse happened in like the beginning of July. I would just have to be able to hole up for maybe the first week of September. Like entropy and rot would destroy any zombie like over that month like people think zombies like can just keep going forever they are susceptible to elements which is why like i'd be fine i would just i don't know uber eat something do a basket out the window gravity is not a zombie's friend entropy will get them in the end and the elements will make it nearly impossible, which is why you guys should all read Zombie Zero, because that is a lot of my theory behind those books. Would you rather go to a Halloween party or go trick-or-treating? Ooh, that's hard. What, what are they serving at the Halloween party? 
I'd actually pick the Halloween party because I'm sure there would be candy there and alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I would pick that. You're in a horror movie. Are you the final girl, the first to die, the comic relief, the skeptic, the smart one, or the killer? This is quite fascinating. I would probably be the one who shows up and says, oh, no, this ain't good. So I'm, I'm going to split. So like in um, Friday the 13th part two, I'm the majority of the people who went to the bar drinking and had nothing to do with the fucking film. Yeah, or I would be the final girl. Although I am susceptible to vice, so I might be offed rather quickly. Do you have to watch something happy after watching a horror movie or can you go to sleep? I can go to sleep unless it was the first time I watched Fire Walk With Me, the first time I watched Event Horizon, or the first time I watched Mulholland Drive. The old people coming under the door? Fuck me, dude. That was not what I was looking for that day. I'll say while watching scary movies. Are you the person who yells at the characters, the person with their eyes covered the whole time, or the person who falls asleep? I am all three. Because each year that goes by, horror movies get more and more stupid. And it's not because the people who make horror are fucking incapable of doing it. It is because the studio system makes fucking movies that are camels, which are horror movies built by committee. And they are fucking awful. And, um, but there's been so many of these for so long that the movies that are inspiring people to make movies now, like a lot of the young independent directors are making shit movies because that's what they grew up with thinking was a good movie. So, um, I fall asleep a lot now, but I am always the person yelling at the screen like this, you stupid fucker. What do you do? Like that, like that's. 100% me. 100% me. Let's see. We're on number 24. Jesus fucking Christ, man. I was going to say, there better be 31 if we're going to go all this way. And there's 29. Fell short, dude. 24. Are you the one who gets scared or the one who does the scaring? I scare people all the time, but I'm jumpy as shit, too. So it's it's a mixed bag. Favorite scary book. I'm trying to think if there was a book that scared the shit out of me. I'd probably have to say Teatro Grotesco, um, the Thomas Ligotti short story book. Some of those stories, they're not scary in the sense that, like, a jump scare happened in the book. It's scary because it's so ludicrous, but extremely possible at the same time. Make of that what you will. How old were you when you saw your first horror movie? Well, I grew up in... Southern California in the 80s. So that means on all of the local stations, like this was before Fox actually became the fourth network. So the local stations like KTLA, KCOP, KTTV, and KCAL, those were the other channels besides CBS, NBC, and ABC. And on those channels especially on weekends. They had um, matinees, and then they had um, your Sunday night movie or your Monday night movie. Like, there were always movies on. But on weekends especially, they would have... You wake up, and you have the Little Rascals, you have the Three Stooges, you have the Munsters, you have Adam's Family. And then because you had that Munsters and Adams Family block, usually right after that, if there wasn't a baseball game or something like that, you would get, like, Frankenstein or Dracula or um, some Universal movie. And then, um, depending on the time of year it was, like, obviously they would ramp that up during October, but, like, during other parts of the year, you would have, like, more, like, obscure kind of junk like horror movies that like whether they were like RKO or like um what was it not Rialto because they would do those were like the crimmies but like Republic you would have just like a bunch of stuff like that um that was like kind of like like after Bella Lugosi couldn't get a job at Universal anymore 
you know, so we're talking like mainly like the 40s and 50s. And then you would have like your sci-fi atomic monster movies. And then usually on Thanksgiving was a Godzilla marathon. So like that was just over the top and amazing. So there were old, and it's weird. Like when we had less channels, I had more shit to watch. It's fucking hysterical. But um, I forgot what the question was. And then also Elvira was on KCAL. So if I could stay up late and sneak to the TV, I could see that. And if I was at my dad's house, I could see it because he would stay up to watch it. And I slept in the living room. So fucking Elvira, dude. Oh, the bone phone, man. Uh. But the first like scary, scary movie I saw was Halloween 3. And um, I remember it was on Halloween and I was across the street at the Kinworthy's and my sister was over there with my friend Kevin's older sisters and they were watching it and we snuck downstairs and hid behind the couch and was watching it right when the the Silver Shamrock commercial came on. And um, I fucking looked up and saw the mask like decapitate that kid and snakes coming out and... Um, I was just like, fuck. Like, what? Like, I felt like I had just witnessed something that I was not supposed to see. And that feeling, that, like, taboo, like, you have done something wrong. And now because you have done something wrong, this image will haunt you the rest of your life. That whole thing, that curse... That was the thing that got me into horror. That's what made me fall in love with it. Trying to recreate that kind of feeling. I just think it's harder and harder. And with the internet and with like everything at everybody's fingertips, I just don't know if horror can be what it was. I think horror, the future of horror is going to be like TikToks, jump scare TikToks. It, and it just sucks because you need to build suspense. And this is that whole thing we were talking about on a stream a long time ago, like the difference between terror and horror. Maybe I'll do that video right after this since I'm talking about it now. You need to have the terror in order to have the horror. Horror without terror is just like, there's nothing to look forward to kind of thing. But I could talk about that later. I'll do that. Jesus Christ, this is fucking going on forever. What was your first Halloween costume? I used to dress up like Frankenstein a lot when I was a kid because um, I had a bowl cut until first grade. Let's say first grade, maybe second grade. And then um, I got a crew cut, a little flat top. And because I got a flat top, obviously that meant I was Frankenstein for the rest of my life at that point. And I would get these, I would check them out of the school library, but there were like these like Dick Smith like makeup books, like how to DIY your own Halloween costumes. And they were great, they were just amazing. Like most of the makeup jobs was like oatmeal and eggshells and like just different ways of doing it. So I would always do that shit, but I would always want to be Frankenstein. So I would just do the green makeup and I would like usually take like construction paper and like do like bolts and have it like be like halfway around my neck or something like that and just like tape it to my skin and then I would sweat and it would fall off and everyone would make fun of me. Um, But that kind of thing. But the first costume that I remember like going to Kmart and like getting like here is a little plastic mask and a vinyl apron that is going to make you sweat like a bitch was E.T. And um, I remember I had it on and um, I was waiting for my family to say, okay, let's go trick-or-treating. And I'm sitting there in my costume, sitting on the steps. I have a picture of this somewhere. And I'm just like, with my fucking mask on. And some kid came to the door to trick-or-treat. And I opened the door in my costume and the kid lost his shit and started screaming threw his bag of candy down and fucking hauled ass down the driveway and went and hugged his mom and um, didn't want to come back and the mom had to like pick him up and bring him and I'm like sorry and I lifted my mask up and I'm like I'm just a dumb kid like you but apparently I was as tall as E.T. was at that point so whatever Um, what are you going to be for Halloween this year I almost made it without doing anything for Halloween 
9 o'clock rolled around, and I got sucked into fucking Halloween stuff. I thought, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it out alive. And nope, I got sucked in. If you could have a spooky Halloween pet, black cat, owl, bat, rat, wolf, what would you pick? I'm allergic to cats. I've had tons of rats. I'd pick the thing from Adam's family, if that's kind of a pet. Yeah, that, that would be my thing. <sighs> so whatever, this was long. This was very fun to do. I really enjoyed it, but it was long as shit. So um, I'm gonna tag, I don't know, it's, it's after Halloween now. I don't know if you guys are gonna now wait till fucking next year to do this. Basically, I would tag anyone in the Anarchy crew and anyone in the crew who hasn't done this already. So if you haven't done this and you're in the crew, you know, do the fucking thing. But if you want to wait till next Halloween, I understand why you would want to do that. But anyway, so thank you so much, Al. That was fucking awesome. Pax's fucking answers to these were great, too. So go check that out. Horrywood, Confessions of a Low-Budget Horror Filmmaker. I put up a new chapter. So there's four chapters now up on Kindle Vela if you're into that sort of thing and you want to know how to fucking make low-budget horror movies, okay? So, type hard, keep buying my books, and I will talk to you later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video, and if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.